Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Richard Chapo. I'm an internet lawyer in San Diego, California, uh, and I advise online businesses. So today we're taking a look at an interesting development coming out of the UK uh, because it kind of gives us a foundation to work off of uh, in discussing a major change to the internet that may well be coming. Uh, and so the topic is the UK online harms white paper uh, and whether it is an example of um, crushing free speech online and uh, government regulations that we may well see coming soon. Uh, so uh, online, free speech. Uh, that's really kind of the utopian view of the internet that we would have the free, uh, free flow of data without any limitations and it would flow across the world and everybody would uh, be as informed as they wanted to be. And in reality, of course, uh, that utopian vision has run into a couple of hurdles. Uh, one, of course, being that some countries don't actually allow for that. So, for instance, China. Uh, and then the secondary one being that we're having some side effects. Uh, and the side effects being uh, that certain groups are publishing things that maybe uh, we as a society feel should be limited. Um, now, of course, there are political and other topics that will get you, um, you know, emotional and uh, hot and bothered. Uh, but the topics, you know, let's just use something benign, probably something like when ISIS, the, the uh, terrorist group was growing and they were publishing videos where they were beheading people and burning people alive and things of that sort. Yeah, I don't think we really need to see a lot of that. Uh, certainly not as much of it as, as was out there. Um so the question that we have now is, you know, are we going to place limits on uh, data online uh, or not? And if we are, how, who's going to do it? You know, all those pertinent questions. And so the UK has published the online harms white paper. It's not a law. It's not a regulation or anything of that sort. It's just a presentation of how the UK thinks that this might work and uh, would like to see a law passed. Uh, and so uh, we are now in a period, again, where other countries are looking at this as well. I call it the Empire Strikes Back period, where governments are starting to regulate the Internet uh, and mark their territory. Uh, so the UK Online Harms White Paper talks about um, giving the government the ability uh, to regulate illegal or harmful speech. They would be able to force uh, platforms, uh, Internet websites and apps to take this content down. Uh, the categories that generally they mention are disinformation, hate speech, extremism, child exploitation. Uh, and so, you know, they would have the power to actually take sites and apps down if they didn't comply uh, to bar their uh, access in the UK, excuse me, uh, and to actually hold the executives of these companies personally liable, both criminally and civilly. Now, when I say these companies, you're probably thinking about Facebook, and that's absolutely true, but this would also apply to smaller websites and apps too. Uh, so if you had a forum or something of that sort, uh, you need to be aware of what's happening. Uh, now, when we talk about illegal or harmful speech, you know, I think we all probably start nodding our head. Uh, and even when we talk about, well, disinformation, hate speech, extremism, and child exploitation, you know, there's probably some head nodding as well. Um, but uh, if we look specifically at disinformation, hate speech, and extremism, the question is who defines those terms? Uh, in the United States, where I am, uh, you know, our political discourse right now is, well, it's ugly. <laughs> and there's a pretty good chance that, you know, the politicians in, in one party or another uh, would classify the statements that their opponents are, are making as either disinformation, hate speech, or extremism. We see President Trump all the time talk about fake news, which is essentially dis disinformation. Um, you know, we have a Democrat representative calling the Israeli prime minister racist today. Uh, as I'm recording this. So is that hate speech? Is it extremism? Uh, what about when you have controversial subject like gay marriage? Are, are people who oppose it, are they extremists? Uh, are people who are in favor of extremists? Uh, you know, I don't know the answers to those questions, um, but you can see how things start getting a little muddled. Uh, now, whatever your political views on, on these various issues, uh, keep in mind that any limits that you advocate for or that you advocate against are also going to apply when the tables turn. So if you are a uh, big supporter of President Trump, for instance, and you're furious at people that are criticizing him and saying all these different things, and you want to see all kinds of limits on what the press uh, can say about uh, the president, uh, well, okay, but what happens down the line when a liberal president is eliminated, uh, or is eliminated, is uh, voted into office? Uh, so let's say uh, Michelle Obama, 
Uh, well, at that point, if you're a supporter of Trump, you probably want to have the right to criticize her without limits. Well, those limits that you put in place when President Trump was there are still going to exist. They're going to apply to you. And of course, the opposite is true. If you were a supporter of Obama, uh, you know, and you didn't want any, uh, you know, criticism of him, well, those those limits would apply, you know, with President Trump and so on and so forth. So we have to be careful when we go forward with these uh, these concepts. Uh, and then on top of all this, of course, history is riddled with situations where, when government is given power to limit free speech, uh, it does a very bad, very bad job of it because uh, most of those efforts uh, to limit the free speech and the flow of information are designed simply to keep whoever's in power in power. Uh, and so that's that's usually not a good thing. <laughs> uh, so anyways, is there a good and simple answer here? Well, we'd like to see some balance. I mean, as an attorney who's been online for 20 years, I've seen some things that cause me concern. Um, but, you know, how do you do that? And even with all my time online and my time dealing with legal issues, you know, it's very difficult to do. So what I would encourage you to do is whatever your position on any of this stuff is get involved, pay attention, set up a Google alert for the keyword, you know, online free speech. Uh, and see what the developments are. And, you know, whatever your position, however comfortable you are, pay attention. And if you see something that bothers you, you know, step up and start expressing your your opinion because the Internet is about to undergo a, a massive fundamental change. And you want to make sure that you at least are aware of what's happening and, you know, have your say uh, so that uh, hopefully some of the more extreme positions that I'm pretty sure governments are going to take uh, don't actually become the de facto law. So anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a good one.